Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Jewel L. And I'm your host, Dino L. Hey, if you are new to our show, we want to welcome you to Speak Out World, Arts, Activism, and More. We want to give a big welcome to our newest listeners in South Africa. We also want to give a shout out to our listeners in Canada, Italy, Singapore, the UK, and across the U.S. Yes, and on Speak Out World, we not only introduce you to new artists and authors, but activists as well. On today's show, we're going to hear from two activists from the state of Georgia on the forefront of fighting Jim Crow 2.0. We'll discuss the social justice movement with our guest, Latoya Brannon, with 9 to 5, and Joel Caldwell with Georgia Stand Up. Hey, Julelle. This is going to be a great show. So yes. stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back with more Speak Out World. Yes. James Baldwin said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. And All our right. two guests are changing the game of social justice while facing Jim Crow 2.0 voting laws in the state of Georgia. Yes, and I'm so excited to introduce our first guest, Latoya Brannon. Latoya is an activist trainer, speaker, and senior organizer in Santa with the 9 to 5 Georgia chapter. And she's also the founder of L.S. Brannon Consultant. She's passionate about closing the gender pay gap and believes that all women should have access to affordable quality health care, regardless of their citizenship or socioeconomic status. Latoya is also a loyal fan of Speak Out World. Yes, Latoya. Hi. Hi. And joining us is Joel Caldwell, Program Director at Georgia Stand Up. Joel has held numerous positions in social justice with Stand Up. He began as a poll worker and volunteer. He's also participated in the revitalization of Vine City Park and English Avenue here in Georgia. And in 2018, Joel took the reins of Stand Up Voters Registration. Now, since 2005, they're, uh, they're getting out the vote campaign since 2015 they have generated over 15,000 voter registration cards and wow. in 2020 2.2 million calls in Texas to across the state of Georgia Ooh. I am so happy to work alongside both of these amazing organizers and colleagues in the movement welcome Latoya and Joel all right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having us. How are y'all? Welcome, you all. Joel, I want to get started with you. People Hello. do not understand that when you um, have ran a get out the vote campaign and when you say that you have 2.2 million te Texas and calls across the state of Georgia, Folks don't know that Georgia has 159 counties. I mean, it's one of the states that has one of the largest amount of counties. And just so the people can know, how did you get involved in social justice, especially with Georgia Stand Up? Um, yeah, so I actually started as a volunteer. Um, we do an annual uh, Stand Up and Give Back where we go out to the community. We partner with United Way. Um, we pass out clothes and food to um, community members and people in need. Um, so I volunteered in 2014 after I was a poll worker for Georgia Stand Up um, during their Marta bus campaign. Um, from there, I uh, moved over to their Build Up program, which is their workforce development program. Um, and then they moved me to their Stand Up and Vote campaign, where I've been uh, getting people registered to vote and making sure they get to the polls. Um, and I enjoy what I do. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, volunteering is something. I mean, I got into this career as well as my previous television career starting off volunteering. So it can definitely open up doors for you. And Dino L, I'm going to uh, let you ask the question to the to the our our guest Latoya since I know her so well. <laughs> Latoya, as an engagement specialist, nine to five, skilled with working with diverse populations, can you tell our listeners about some of the partners and outreach organizations in which you coordinate strategic planning and policy development? Sure. Uh, here in Georgia, we are blessed to be a part of a large collaborative. As Joel and Jewel have shared with you, we have 159 counties, which means there is a lot of people that we like to touch. So here we do a lot of collaborative work with a lot of the national organizations that your listeners may be familiar with, like the NAACP and the National Council of Negro Women and the League of Women Voters. But here locally, we've also been fortunate to partner with a lot of the churches who have really stood up and got behind us and supported us in all of our efforts for civic engagement. In addition to the People's Agenda and the Working Families Party here locally in the Savannah area. Okay. Thank you. Well, you know, most people, when they think about Georgia, because Georgia, I mean, made history in 2020. All eyes were on Georgia. And then Georgia flipped the script, turned everything blue. And then you had the Senate race, where the world was still watching Georgia. And Georgia did it again and flipped it again. But what most people don't know around the world, sometimes you only, and, and I don't want to take any anything away from their shine. So let me just say this, but they only know a certain, a couple of organizations that they know that are boots on the ground that have helped make a difference. But Collectively, I mean, there are at least over 40 organizations that have been working together that made a difference in the 2020 election. And I mean, Joel, would you like to touch on that? Yeah, um, here in Georgia, I'm actually on the um, ex I'm the executive board member of uh, Go Vote Georgia, which comprises over 45 groups, uh, at least 45 groups. Um, and it takes a team effort. It's not about one group. Um, here in Georgia, we work as a team. We collaborate together um, to really just push people to the polls to use the power that's given to them. Um, and we're going to continue to do that regardless of what bill passes in our legis state legislature. Following up with you, Latoya, can you tell our listeners about some of the programs and workshops you have facilitated, such as Community Justice Fellowship Program, the Step Up Savannah's Neighborhood Academy, the Right Choice Mentoring Program, or the Ground Game Innovation. Tell our listeners something about those. Well, Step Up Savannah is another smaller nonprofit organization that's only based here in Savannah. And I'm happy to say that they have started to become heavily involved in the voting efforts here in our community and statewide. And hopefully it's going to be their reach. Uh, I have worked with the Right Touch Mentoring Program, which actually is a program based out of Savannah State University, one of the HBCUs here in the state of Georgia, to work with um, that particular group really caters to individuals who may not have a lot of family support before they went to college, those who might have aged out of foster care as well while they were also trying to pursue their studies. And I've been um, had the opportunity to work with them to help talk to their students about salary negotiations skills and why that's so important that not only women, but all individuals of color, when you start that job, to start at a really great place and to talk to them about fringe benefits, because we know oftentimes young people just look at, oh, I don't want any deductions from my check, to really teach them that if you're offered health insurance or retirement plans, to really do your best to take full advantage as a younger person so you have longer time to really build up. I'm really um, excited and proud of the work I've done with Ground Game Innovations. They are a group that is based in North Carolina, but they did have the fortitude to know before you come to Georgia and to Savannah, you need to make local partnerships because we all know that people look to those they know and are familiar with. It's yeah. not often a great thing to have outsiders come in. And I'm sure Joel will talk about it here in Georgia when the election became really popular and hot. Everybody was running in 
tell them we have this. We're boots on the ground. We know where to go and where to yes. find the people. So I'm really proud of the work that we were able to do with that group because they did ask, you know, before they came in and got support and hired local individuals, which was also a boost to the local economy. They didn't bring in people from the outside to hire. We had the opportunity to get local individuals jobs as canvassers. You know, it was really effective during the registration process and especially during the get out to vote and that election cycle that we so jokingly says would never end. (laughs) Yeah, I I want to piggyback off of that because um, as Joel mentioned before, it has been a collective, like he mentioned over, was it 40 um, organizations? Yeah, at least 40. It's probably around 60, to probably be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and so when you combine, I mean, those organizations all working together, including 9 to 5 in Georgia Stand Up, in addition to the other partnerships that you all have as organizers, right? Um, Because it was a lot of attention given to Georgia. I mean... Not that I don't think that anyone wanted that that extra help, but just kind of explain a little bit more how it kind of um, did it did it. Let me put it this way. Did it affect your work at at all as organizers? Joel, did it affect your work um, having a lot of outside people coming in and saying, oh, we we want to help change, you know, we want to help change Georgia. (laughs) <laughs> um, did it affect? Yeah, a little bit. Um, but we run a, a a very large, I guess, um, program uh, in the state. So really, it was kind of a, a partnership. So that we've had we had groups that came from out of state that wanted to um, work in the in the state doing voter registration, doing phone um, call, uh, phone calling, text banking, door knocking. Um, actually, in the Savannah area. Um, and, and, you know, we help support them in what they needed and help provide them with walk list and try to reach out to other groups. But um, it affected it a little, but, you know, we still powered through it. Um, and, you know, if they want to come back and help, you know, all the help is needed is we will take it. <laughs> well, following up on that, Joe, let me ask you this. How challenging was it for you to manage all of the voter registration with the new Georgia law now being in place, uh, that is, you know, really, uh, SB 202 has really put some challenges in our voting laws. So how difficult do you think it's going to be from this point forward to really focus on voter registration? Uh, yeah, so we're going to continue to always push to uh, get pe- new people registered, to um get people to the polls. Um, HB 202 just shows us that they were really upset about, I guess, the way the election turned out for them. Absolutely. Um, and they had to go back and change what their predecessors did, essentially. Um, but it's not going to stop us. Um, it, you know, we just might have to shift and pivot. You know, that's what this is. It's always about shifting and pivoting, but we will always make sure that these Georgia voters have access to these polls, will be able to vote in a free and fair election in Georgia. Latoya, you want to add anything to that? I would add that um, most of the listeners probably hear us calling out the numbers, but I would just like to share with them the name of the what it's the what it's known as legally is the Voter Integrity Act of 2021. And mm-hmm. I think that that word integrity usually implies, you know, that just something of value. So I would like to help people remember that certain lawmakers decided that they were going to create a solution for a problem. But we have to remember there, were, the, there wasn't a problem that existed. We were all able collectively to get voters out and people use every method that we helped provide them with to go out and make sure their voices were heard and that their votes were counted. As Joe mentioned, by providing rise to the poll, helping people request absentee ballots, you know, line warming activities, getting people to stay in line. So I just think that the name is also telling. Um, Integrity is something of value. So we just really want people to know that your vote is valuable. That's why there's so much attention being given 
to taking that away right now. And and a change in the voting law that was not based upon truth, facts. Mm -hmm. It wasn't based on any type of problem to help folks make it easier for them to vote. It was just, we didn't like the outcome. Mm -hmm. We started a lie. We're going to build up off this lie. Continue. Um, As organizers, I mean, Joel, I heard you mention we're going to pivot and turn, right? And one of the things that 2020 brought was the pandemic. I mean, you're talking about pivoting and turning. It, It was totally different from 2015, 2016 or 18 elections where you can go out and be at events, um, and get people registered to vote. I mean, touch on the fact that how the pandemic in 2020, um, kind of changed the game a bit. And then how do you think it's going to change moving forward? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So with COVID coming last year, um, it gave us, it really put a shed a, a light on how Georgia is going to have to change during voter registration, during elections, um, going to mail-in ballots, and absentee ballots and drop boxes and things of that sort. Um, And with that happening now, you kind of see that this changed the way people vote. It's getting, it's giving more access to voters. Um, And we need to continue that. Um, (laughs) But now that they've stripped, you know, lowered the the hours to the polls and, you know, now you can't, um, you know, you got to have less polls, less drop boxes. It's really showing that Georgia is not, um, really for voters' rights at this point. Um, and, you know, we need to continue to fight, but we also need to show, uh, get the information to our voters all across the state and help provide them with the information they're going to need in these upcoming local elections um, where yeah. it's going to affect them directly. Well, can I follow up? Because I want to ask mm-hmm. both of you this question. In regards to the Georgia's new voting law, what do you feel should be our next steps as citizens of Georgia and our politicians? What should they do? And how can we galvanize our economic power to demonstrate our discontent of this law? I would say, uh, to add to what Joel said, that absentee ballots and the ballot boxes in these times are just going to be so important. And I think one of the biggest things we're going to have to continue to do, those of us who are organizers, is to make sure that we provide the public with correct and accurate information. Mm-hmm. We know how we know how fast uh, rumors start and misspread. So we're going to have to really be at the forefront of providing accurate information, especially when it comes to the ballot boxes and the hours and the placement of those boxes. Um, I've read a certain article, I'm sorry, I want to quote it, uh, where over 200,000 Georgians don't have driver's license. And we all know that here in this past election and and with this new bill, they're going to be really not just checking signatures anymore. It's going to be ID. And we know that there are black, brown and Asian communities who are going to be heavily influenced. And, you know, their votes are really the ones that helped change the state in this past election. Nine to five is bar- part of the nonpartisan organization. I'm going to do my best to stay within that realm when I answer this. Yes. <laughs> yes. We all know that corporations donate big bucks to certain candidates. And we know that here, as of late in the past several weeks, we've heard people talk about not buying Coke and Delta and not shopping at Home Depot. And we've even seen the governor come out to speak against the Major League Baseball pulling out of Georgia and how that can hurt the economy. Well, what about let's change that minimum wage up to $15 an hour so that we can help boost the economy? Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And it's so funny because when when they were talking about when the governor governor was talking about um, the Major League Baseball leaving and how this is going to really hurt the working people. But you're not concerned about the working people based upon the policies that you have within the state. You're not concerned about the working people when you're cutting, cutting money from education. You're not concerned about the working people when you are cutting um 
social services mm-hmm. to folks, when you're not giving back to child care, when you're not helping to reduce the numbers in Georgia when it comes to the pandemic. So how can now you want to talk about, oh, we want to protect the little people, don't bo- boycott, but all of your policies are co- um, contradict those to help working people every day. Joel, do you want to add on that? Yeah, uh, it is weird that he wants to be concerned with Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. He wasn't concerned when he signed the bill uh, mm-hmm. that caused him to leave. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we know where their true part lies. Um, and what we need to start doing is actually holding these elected officials in our state economy. Uh, we can go down to their offices, we can call them, we can write them. I mean, we need to do that and let them know that, hey, when your time time is up, we're going to vote you out. Um, That's our best method. Um, That is the method that works. We also need to start empowering our local community people to run for these offices as well. To have the interests of the community at their heart um, instead of these politicians who, you know, just come in during during election time, want to tell you something good, and then you never see them again or they just move in your area and then want to run for an election. Yes. They just move there and they know they're mm-hmm. um, We really have to start holding these elected officials accountable, and that's the best way to do it, start voting them out, you know, joining together and, you know, making change ourselves. You know, it's, Absolutely. Our, it's for us. It works for us. We don't, you know, work for them. And I want to add one thing to what he Go said ahead. to your uh, listeners. And Joel could probably add to this too. Georgia gives amazing tax credits to filmmakers and the people in that industry right. who come to Georgia to make mm-hmm. films and movies. Uh, you guys are have lots of that in Metro Atlanta and also here in Savannah. We've had lots of films made here. And if you guys can remember, during the time of those abortion bills, the film industry pulled out until Georgia got it together on those bills. And I'm feeling like maybe they need to help really support us. We all know that people love their soda and they love Delta. That's mm-hmm. only going to last a certain amount of time before somebody says, no, I'm just going to go ahead and use my miles <laughs> and get on Delta. Yeah. So I feel we need big support from people in the film industry to help pull out when the state doesn't have bills that really help the whole, you know, the community at large. Yeah, definitely. Latoya, like, how, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was go just going to say, yeah, you know, these companies are the same way as just like these politicians. They are uh, actually, you know, they'll put their black, uh, you know, logo on their social media and tell you that they stand with that person and that person yes. in this campaign and please buy my shoes and my mm-hmm. coats, I fly my planes. But when it's really time to stand up, then they're ghosts. Um, yes. So, yeah, the... <laughs> Yeah, so we really do need to also start holding these companies that are in our state accountable. We are, um, you know, as they say, we're the new Hollywood, you know, majority of movies, TV shows right. um, here in Georgia because of our, our amazing tax credit. Um, mm-hmm. We just, like I say, start using this power that we have to actually affect change and help these communities of people that's impoverished here in this state um, because it, you know, we can be the model for the rest of the country of how. Mm-hmm. Real Absolutely. Also, how real business and mm-hmm. how real community and the state should act towards its constituents and, and residents. Yeah, I mean, Will Smith has already decided not to film his movie Emancipation here in the state of Georgia mm-hmm. as a form of protest. You know, so and every everyone still continue to have their eyes on the state of Georgia and how we handle this voting bill. If you notice, once this voting bill got signed, the other states that did not have the outcome that they anticipated, let me put it that mm-hmm. way, you notice that they were like, oh, yeah, and let's let us put together a Jim Crow 2.0 mm-hmm. voting law, or let us put together like Florida, an anti-riot mm-hmm. um, bill mm-hmm. and law and sign that in the middle of the night. So regardless of how this verdict turns out, if folks are protesting, guess what? We can, we can go ahead and arrest you. So mm-hmm. anyway, I don't, I don't want to get mm-hmm. ahead of myself, but Dino, I'm going to let you go ahead and go for the next question. 
Well, Latoya, I just want to come back to you and ask, how is your background as a as an educator, master in education, public health and case manager, and customer engagement recruiter helped you as a community outreach organizer uh, and a program consultant? Well, because I don't work for the state anymore, I don't have, I don't feel like I have a muzzle on my mouth. Um, okay. As you guys, as um, as you said, I did work for many years as a state employee, primarily uh, with Department of Human Services, and then I rolled over to public health. And during that time, we had another gubernatorial election. And lots of changes anticipated in our state's Medicaid policies that uh, did not happen. I won't call the name of that person. People know who he, he know who he is, and the voters in Georgia know who he is as well. Mm -hmm. And it was said that he didn't expand Medicaid coverage because it was going to be an election year type issue. Well, the election came and went, and Medicaid was not expanded. And as um, everyone knows, people try to um, change the name of the Affordable Care Act and people. People start calling it Obamacare to kind of be negative is what some of the let the lawmakers were doing. But yes. Obamacare can only do so much here in our state. If we would have expanded Medicaid, so many more people would have health coverage right now. Um, if we could increase that minimum wage, more people would be covered. In my work experience Absolutely. there, it was really a great platform for this work because I can really see areas where people were not being supported. They were going into these governmental agencies trying to get help. I was seeing instances where people would just be 10 or $20 over the threshold. And just because they got just enough unemployment benefits, their families were not eligible for SNAP or food stamp benefits or medical coverage or even child care subsidies, which people really need. So during that time, I was able to um, volunteer I had my biggest, I think, first time really completely volunteering in a election was in 2018 for the governor. I couldn't wait for the workday to be over. I felt like I could take off my work persona and be ready to like phone bank and text and do whatever I can. I would not knock on doors because I didn't want to run the risk of going to somebody's house who might have been a higher up. You know, you know, in those agencies. Yeah. But I didn't mind calling and texting and doing whatever I could to be of service after hours and on weekends because we had to make some change. So all of those things really did prepare me. I heard so many stories of families, you know, who were without. Uh, we talked even at nine to five just a few weeks ago about the cliff effect. You just made just enough. Yes. So now mm -hmm. you are no longer eligible for certain subsidies. And to see how that's really impacting our families here in Georgia, because, you know, just enough to not get the benefits, but your wages still are not enough for you to have, you know, safe, affordable housing for you and your children or even child care services. Ooh. I mean, even though you're yeah. very, you know, you're making more than the minimum, you're still, you know, underemployed and, you know, mm -hmm. in that realm where you're living by the, the thread of your teeth each and every day. One emergency can shatter the savings. Absolutely. And people I love to talk about folks credit. Well, if I have to rob Peter to pay Paul and figure out which one of these bills I'm going to pay, you know, your credit is out, out the door. So. Right. <laughs> right. And I mean, and I, I, I think one of the key issues and you all can correct me in terms of really getting the message out about voting is because voting affects all of the all of these areas in your life and sometimes we just see voting as the the election day as the event of the day or only the presidential elections right every four years but to really convey to folks that their voice is needed to be voice needed to be heard in in the in the in, in the booth, right? So that it affects your health care, your school, Medicaid, all those things are on the ballot. And if we are not able to make it to the voting polls to be able to let our voices heard, there's so many things that we're gonna miss out in our community. Not only, I mean. I mean, not only just with voting, but I'm re redistricting and how the lines are drawn. It seems like um, I think I can say this because I but it just seems like we have one party that is more concerned about picking the its voters than having the voters pick them. I mean, Joe, what's your take on it? Yeah, um, 
that's one of the struggles here in Georgia. Uh, we got the census and redi- I mean, we got redistricting coming up uh, this year and voters don't know. Um, even some voters don't know what that is. Uh, when you talk about gerrymandering in this state, um, it affects everybody, but a lot of people don't know how. Um, and we need to get that information to them and let them know, hey, it's coming up where your elected official who you thought you've been voting for for years now now might not be your elected official no more. Um, and that school that's in your district might not be in your district no more. Um, and we need to start waking up these voters here and just the residents in general to what's about to happen and get them on board and get involved and let them have a voice um, of what needs to happen in their communities. Exactly. I, th- exactly. I think we need to stress something Joel said earlier, and that is that all voting is local. <laughs> we really need people to understand your mayor, your county commissioner, your city council representative, your school board person. Yes. Your the coroner. You really need to not just come out when it's presidential elections. We need you to vote in every single election. And here it is. We're in 2021. And I can sit here and tell you guys, we just voted our very first African-American female district attorney here in Chatham County. Yeah. Yeah, We've had it. You know, it's sad to me. Sometimes we're still doing our first, you know, blow. Black sure. and Hispanic, you know, we're doing these first, but we've had our first female mayor, we've had our first African American mayor, and all these things. But this was our first time with the DA. And to prove that all voting is local, not far from here is Brunswick, Georgia. And lots of people heard about Brunswick, Georgia, Glen County last year doing Ahmaud Arbery's case. Well, those yeah. folks have gotten together, they've mobilized those voters, and they voted out that DA who, right. and got a new one. So people have to all really right. truly understand your local voice is so important. Well, Joe, let me follow up with you, if I can, Joe. Can you mm-hmm. speak out on some of the Georgia stand-up initiatives, like Earth Day, Free College Week of Action, Georgia Environmental Justice Education and Awareness Symposium? Tell us uh, some of the activists that are also working with Georgia Stand Up, if you can, like Common and some others. Yeah, sure. So we've had um, Common uh, at our office um, he did a, a concert and we did a roundtable discussion with him um, during the runoff election. Um, we also had Mile Moore in our office to do that. We also work with uh, state and local politicians as well to help um, get our information to the community. Um, we have a lot of information of ways to help our communities. And sometimes our local politicians are the best way to get that out. Um, also, they come to us for consultation on the best way to get their message out. Um, we also do uh, environmental justice, which we partner with United Way, we partner with WAWA, which is the West Side Water Alliance, um, to do like Park the Creek cleanup. So we have trash traps that are in Park the Creek that we go clean out um, to keep the waterway safe. Uh, we just had Earth Day that passed. Uh, we also do uh, revitalization revitalization of parks. Um, yeah, so we're not just a, a voter, uh, voting and civic engagement organization. Like sometimes the media want to relegate our organization is the only one thing, um, you know, you. yeah, that's only a, you know, a piece of what we do. We do, you know, we work in the um, arts and entertainment as well. We have a program called We Show Up. Um, we also work in a policy civic leadership program, which is our policy institute that we've done uh, since 2005, I think. Um, we have also do a, a prep apprenticeship and work development programs, which is a Georgia trade up and Georgia build up. Um, so I have, you know, I assist with pretty much every program we have. Um, you know, but my my main baby is always stand up and vote because I like getting the information to our voters because that's how change, you know, really happens in Georgia. It's getting these people to act right. <laughs> Jill, I have one more follow up. I got to get it. No way, no problem. But Dino, we have to get a special shout out because you know you said common. So coming from the shy. From the south that's side, right. you know, we we that gotta right? do like a that's yeah. right, yeah. south side, you know. <laughs> we gotta do that little shout out. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe, you know. Joe, listen, uh I heard now this is through the grapevine, but I okay. heard that you got some really dedicated uh 
workers that work, senior citizens that work on getting out to vote. And <laughs> they don't mess around. You want to talk about that? How oh, do you yeah. motivate them? How, how do you motivate those senior citizens to get out and do the job that they do? Because it's through your leadership. Yeah, I have I have an amazing uh, team of a uh, field team of uh, voter registration canvassers, phone bankers, and text bankers. Um, I keep them in. I just, I want them to you know give their knowledge because that's where it comes from. They're a lot older than me. Um, on average, I want to say, um, you know, we have a, a senior, not senior crew. I don't want to call them that. Um, but on average, they're mostly thirty five and older, um, okay. but they have knowledge, they have wisdom, experience, um, and I, and the communities we work in, you know, have a lot of youth, and I, and we need to start doing that and letting our seniors go and get and talk to the youth um, so they can learn. That's how I yeah. learned, you know, coming up, and it seems like as more as we progress, we're getting further away from that. Um, but it's, I really love empowering my, my um, seniors and really all my staff to tell their story because they all have stories. They all have knowledge that needs to be shared with me and, and with the rest of the community. And, you know, as, as they pass away and we all pass away, that information dies unless we pass it on. Um, Got so you. We need to, yeah. So we need to start, you know, empowering people to just tell their story and, and share their knowledge and, and pass it on instead of letting it pass away with you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just keep them motivated by just letting them know, Hey, Get out there, talk to people. Hey, if you don't register nobody to vote that day, that's fine. But share your story with people. Let them know, hey, this is what's going on. How can you help? And this is what we can do to help as well in the community. And speaking Absolutely. of community, it, it seems like that um, things that you said, Joel and Latoya, it's really about building relationships. Am I not right? That's correct. That's yes. been, uh, essential. Uh, I would say even in my personal experience, because I am of a small team here, even though I'm a part of a state organization. So partnering with other organizations has been essential um, to our success for even those who some say who don't they didn't know about us. Other partners are like, no, you got to invite them too. they're going to come. They're going to bring their materials. What they're doing is amazing work. And then just to be able to let, meet new people and let them know that we do exist. You know, like uh, Joel said, how many organizations are doing this work? So sometimes I think uh, we're a little bit overshadowed by those groups with the larger advertising budget. But the work mm -hmm. is still being done. That that I mean I I hear you with that we had the great pleasure on Speak Out World having the executive director Ling Ling Chancy on mm -hmm. not uh, on our show so I know that um, you know the the amazing work that you all are doing as well my question to uh, to you all as organizers um, I was listening to a cable news network. <clears throat> And um, it was shout out to Joy Reid. Joy, Joy, if you ever listening to us, I'm just saying, I'm shouting you out. It was so it was with Joy Reid and she had Stacey Abrams on. Right. And so she posed the question, you know, are Georgia, you know, the folks in Georgia, are they are they tired of elections now? Because so much pressure was on the state of Georgia in terms of, you know, producing uh, for 2020 and 21 when it you know, came to the runoff Senate election. And that that's, I know that's something else we want to touch on since um, Warnock is from uh, your neck of the woods, Latoya, from yeah. Savannah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, do, are, are you all feeling a little burnt out with- Pressure. Yeah, or burnt out or pressure, yes. Thank you, Dino L, regarding voter registration and the fight now um, with um, SP202, like how, how are you feeling about that? I think people don't truly understand um, the emotional and mental toll that this work can sometimes take on you. They just see organizers and volunteers and staff out. So they think, oh, they must be physically strong. They're knocking on doors. They're doing all this stuff. But they don't sometimes understand that emotional part of it to after you've had this day, uh, like Joel just shared with you the age of some of his canvassers where they might be explained to a young person when they say, well, my vote doesn't count or it doesn't matter. 
and you're really explaining to them why every single vote counts, why it's especially important and why they should be engaged. And sometimes um, when you're trying to dispel a lot of myths, it can kind of take a little bit of a toll on you. But once you've had that moment to see this great win and you've been able to uh, encourage somebody to not just register, but to get out to vote or when you're able to speak to someone at a polling location who maybe is looking a little weary from standing in line, offer them a chair and water or just a snack. And my number one go-to is bubbles for kids. Uh, <laughs> you're just feeling a little bit more rewarded when people are sometimes like, okay, well, I'm going to stand in line and I'm going to continue to wait because we all know that communities of color are the ones where the polling locations are changed. Those are the places where they might not have enough machines or Absolutely. the machine may be broken or they're waiting on this IT staff person who's also probably a volunteer or paid for two days to come over and fix it. So that's why it's so important for us, for people to know that, you know, we're human. We want to tell you our personal opinions, but we cannot. We have to keep it nonpartisan. And I think it's really hard when you're talking to someone who is uh, listening to a TV report or something that you know is not true, and they're about to go in there and vote against their own best interests. Wow. Well, yes. I hope, I, listen, I hope Bubbles are not was not a part of the uh, uh, warm of the line session with food and everything, since now the governor said that they can just order some grub hub. But, um, you know, but, but you <laughs> Joel can probably share too, but to me, that has been the number one. <laughs> When people have kids, you can ask them, can I give you a child? You know, they just yes. entertain themselves with bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know. He might he might start throwing bubbles in there too as a, as an uh, um a <laughs> amendment to, <laughs> to the law. But uh Joe, what what is your take on it? Yeah, you know, they trying to, you know, they all they wanted to stop us from giving out water and just making people enjoy the experience to go vote, you know, but we're, we're going to continue to do that. You know, I think they got, uh, I think it's like 150 feet or something mm -hmm. away from the building and 25 feet or something away from the lines. Right. Something really, but it's okay. Uh, we'll still make sure that these voters have what they need uh, when they go Absolutely, to the poll. Absolutely, Joe. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, whether it's, you know, meeting them down the street and giving it to them before they get yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, is there's ways to do this, you know, and um I'm just excited. You know, we got the local elections getting ready to to start and, and we're gonna get ready to test out HB two oh two. Um we're gonna we're gonna navigate it. I think um, you know, you'll see great resilience out of all our organizations in this state. Um, you'll see great partnership from all our organizations in this state. Um and we're we're gonna continue to fight. Uh, this isn't over by no means. Yeah. You'll see a lot of change in these next couple of years in Georgia as we, you know, change out these politicians and get ones in that I guess want to help and help the communities they serve. Really, <laughs> the word of 2020 was pivot, and we not only did we pivot. I think everyone realized just how resilient we all are as individuals because we were doing a lot of work while still fighting a pandemic. So because wow. of that pandemic, we saw you know certain people who would normally be poll workers or volunteers just couldn't because of their pre-existing conditions. But we still pressed on and we just figured out different ways to do things. And I am really concerned. And I hope what's challenged when, like you said, when all this comes out, one of the things I hope is really, truly challenged is this whole process right now about the ballot boxes. I live in a county where the League of Women Voters fundraise and purchase eight of those ballot boxes so oh, that they wow. can be strategically placed throughout the county, not just that one outside of the Board of Elections. So, you know, in like uh, lower income neighborhoods and then other places where students close to the college campus, because we all know just because you're a student, that doesn't mean you stop voting. You may be registered at your mom's house in Athens, but you may be going to college in Statesboro or some other city. You still are a Georgia voter and you deserve to vote for whatever is mm -hmm. happening in your home county. So I am really looking forward to seeing what happens with that because we all know a ballot box inside the building is not that, it's not that great of an idea when right. we're used to having them outside 
of the building and where people can access them 24 hours because they're outside of buildings that have cameras and, you know, other mechanisms to make sure they're secured. I would really hope that we challenge this whole bit about people not automatically getting those absentees because we all know an individual, a family member, friend, whomever, a neighbor who's over 65 years old, they're not going to remember every single election to keep asking for an absentee ballot when before they just checked that box and they automatically got them every single election. As a personal note, I'm really concerned about the residents in some local nursing homes to where the Mm. staff has been helping them you know, Miss uh, Mr. Jones, do you want to vote? Yes. And get, you know, helping them get in their, you know, forms and helping them sign them and dropping them in boxes and mailing them. Well, now with all of this ID requirements, that's just creating a barrier. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so part of that solution is making sure that in your outreach, that you have organizers there that will help them overcome those barriers. So Joel talked about pivoting. So how do you pivot on something like that, Joel? Um, Well, one way that we're going to be actually looking at pivoting on that is making, trying to, I guess, give voters access to printers, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, having somewhere where they can come and get their ID printed. Not everybody can go to a Staples or Office Depot. Um, There's not a Staples, Office Depot, you know, sometimes in a lot of these rural areas. Mm -hmm. Um, So right now we're actually um, identifying places that are willing to print people's IDs for free. So that way they have copies who want to do absentee voting and voting by mail. Um, and we're, you know, it's like I say, it's about shifting and pivoting and still providing our voters what they need. Um, so like I say, you know, whether it's, we can reach out to a CVS or Walgreens or, you know, there might be a local gas station in some of these rural areas. Cause in some of these cities, you know, in Georgia, there might be only a gas station in a, a feed store, yeah. but right. a gas station in a feed store, maybe, you know, they would like to help, you know, community members vote by, you know, printing out their IDs for them um, and, you know, helping facilitate that process. Um, Like I say, right now, with, you know, so much information in Georgia being thrown around about HB 202 um, and misinformation and right information mixed in, um, I think right now everybody, all the groups and all, all the lawyers and politicians are scrambling to figure out this thing. Um, I don't even think the governor even probably even knows what's all in this thing. So <laughs> at, this, sure. at this point, you sure. know, you probably don't even know. So, you know, we, we're just going to work, to, you know, we're all going to work and learn together, I guess, and find out. Um, but I really, I, I really hope they ain't, they're not going to arrest nobody for passing out yeah. some of the thirsty Georgia voters. I, I'm pretty sure they understand what it's like to stand in that, that 99 degree heat while you're trying to vote and for you're four pouring. or five hours. Right. Right. That's yeah. Crazy. crazy. Four, four hours, eight hours. You all, this has been such a great conversation yes. before we end, um, you know, wrap it up. I feel like that there were some other things that I wanted to touch on regarding the verdict and all that, but we're just going to have to have you all come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to know, um, is there anything you want to share with folks that they can do if they're interested in making a change and getting involved in social justice? And mind you, this isn't just for folks that live in Georgia. This is for anyone listening throughout the nation or, uh, you know, literally across the seas that they're watching how we handle things here in the state of Georgia, but you know, what would you tell folks that are interested in, in getting involved in social justice and making a change? Uh, Latoya, I'll start with you. I would tell uh, folks one, two, if they're not already to follow uh, our, all of our organizations on our social platforms, because we are trusted messengers. We are going to be given accurate information. I would encourage them to, if they if they work in an environment like I did, and you can't necessarily be vocal, to donate to the organizations, donate to the causes, and volunteer when you can after hours, 
Or if you know other individuals who are interested in the work, encourage them to volunteer and to help spread truthful information because we are right now on the path of doing white supremacy rehab. We all are. We've been mm-hmm. held and bound so long to now we're all relearning how to do certain things. So I would encourage them to follow trusted messengers and accurate news sources. Right. And what about you, Joel? Um, yes. Uh I would definitely get involved, volunteer always, um, donating to your local organizations, um, going to your going to your community meetings. That's a great way to um, find out what's going on, ways to get involved. Um, you know, every community is different um, and all voting is local um, or all politics is local as well. Um, also, you know, look out, look through social media. Those are great tools to um, find your local nonprofits that are doing what you want to do and, and in your area. Um, you know, there's, there's so many ways that you can actually like help your community is sometimes it's not about joining the nonprofit. Sometimes it's just about going out and feeding the homeless yourself. Um, it doesn't really take much to do, you know, walk down your street with a trash bag and a picker, you know, you can get them at, at a local hardware store and, and pick up trash in your community or, you know, you and your neighbors band together and, and you know, teach some youth a, a trade skill. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so a lot of times, it's, you know, definitely, I, you know, I work for a nonprofit and I always encourage people to donate to our, to our nonprofit um, and other nonprofits. But like I say, sometimes, you know, when you want to be involved and be an activist, it's not always about just being with a nonprofit. It's you doing it yourself as well. It's actions that we can all take. It's not, you know, it's not an organization. It's not a name. Okay. You know, I love Georgia Stand Up, but I don't have to have Georgia Stand Up to make sure my community's clean or make Absolutely. sure the kids are safe or any of that. Make sure the elders are fed or, or whatnot. And we got to get back to doing that. That, that is so true. Absolutely um, right. Um, before I let uh, Dino close us out, I just wanted to know, was there anything that was coming up within your organization or anything that you all wanted to touch on to let the people know about 9 to 5 or Georgia Stand Up that we were not able to touch? And so, Joel, I'll come back to you and start with that. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you can always uh, find us at georgiastandup.org um, with all of our event information our program information. We also have ways to volunteer. Um, but yeah, just be on the lookout. We're going to be having our We Show Up our productions coming where you can find new, uh, new information about ways to vote, um, things that's going on in your county, your representatives. Uh, so stay tuned to that and we'll be definitely having that on our website. And you can always sign up for our newsletter on our website as well. All right. And Latoya? I would encourage everyone to follow us at 925, and it's 9, the word 2 spelled out, T-O, the number 5, just like Dolly's movie in the song, dot .org. We are on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, even check us out. Uh, in the upcoming week, we're going to be having a discussion with child care providers in the state of Georgia about changes in rules and regulations. We're going to be having a slumlord town hall for the residents in Albany, Georgia, who are fighting uh, uh, endlessly and tirelessly over their utility bills and the lack of regulation over landlords in their area. And then on May the 1st, yes, we're going to be having an I Am Woman award ceremony. And you can register for that on our Facebook page and just take a look at us on 9to5.org for information about all of those events. Well, thank you all. I I tell you, Dino L., the work does not stop. No, and it's been a great show, Jewel L. Uh, I'm telling you, I've learned so much today. And I want to thank our wonderful guests, Latoya Brand and Joel Caldwell, for giving us some powerful insight on social justice work happening right here in Georgia. And if you're interested in getting involved in some good trouble, Check out their websites again at georgiastandup.org and 9to5.org and see how you can volunteer and make a donation.
Yes, and be sure to tune in anytime on Amazon, Apple, Podbean, or any podcast platform. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you have a voice, so don't be afraid to speak out, world. Speak out. Yeah, baby. Speak out. Yeah. Yeah.